Hello everyone and welcome to another After Effects tutorial. My name is Tyler Bradway and this is Creative Ed Studios. Today we're going to be trying to do a, a, something that kind of looks like data mosh. Actually it looks a lot like data mosh completely within After Effects and with no third-party plugins. We're going to be using the content aware fill set to its surface method. Yeah, so um, I hope you guys will like this tutorial. Uh, let's get started. All right, let's jump into this tutorial. As you can see, um, I have the footage. So I have one clip of this wacky ass woman. And then there's also this creepy, creepy pool guy. To get this effect, we're going to be using the content aware fill. There's a panel for it. And if you can't find the panel in your configuration, uh, go to window and it's somewhere over here, content aware fill. All right, so um, we're not gonna do it quite yet. First, we gotta kinda like set up how we want this to be. All right, I want the frame of the data mosh to start on this frame. So let's create a reference frame. Now that's gonna open up Photoshop and we don't have to do anything to this. We just have to hit save and do command S and it saves it as a reference frame. We don't have to close Photoshop. We can close it. It doesn't matter. It's saved. So we go back into After Effects and you can see it created a layer. So now let's zoom in here and move this old guy over one frame. I'm going to hide the top layer. We have to mask out the area which we want the smearing to occur. I'm going to turn my masks to none so that I can see what I'm doing while I'm working. I masked his head and shoulders, and it's very rough. So let's, I'm going to split this layer just so I have a duplicate of this layer. Command Shift D, and I'm just going to bring it below here, and I'm going to hit M and just delete these. Um, so on this layer, you'll actually want to set the masks to subtract and then we'll add a refine soft matte. So we add that on there. All right, so I adjusted the refine matte. I have a tutorial on refine matte. If you want more detail on how this effect works, you can check that out. We're gonna have to pre-render this one clip because my God, this is going slow. My computer is dying right now. Um, so let's, we gotta pre-compose this just to kind of isolate and we're gonna move the attributes and we'll call it creepy guy, whatever your second clip is, whatever helps you remember it. And then this is PC for pre-render. PC just means pre-comp. And then I'm gonna double click it, go into it, hold shift and drag it so it snaps, hit B on your keyboard and then hit N on this side and that's going to snap the work area. We can just hit file, export, add to render queue. For this I have a preset uh, ProRes 4444 RGBA. I'm going to click into it just so you can see what the settings are. It's a quick time. You're going to want to make sure it's RGBA, trillions of colors, so make sure your uh, your project settings are 16-bit or else you only have millions of colors and then color we want straight unmatted. Oh, and the video codec is Apple ProRes Now for the output All right, it's done rendering. I'm gonna import that file double click in here to open up the browser and then open up the folder where it is and just hit open and Then hold shift and drag it to snap it to the work area and I can hide this top layer because we don't want it still processing that. Because we rendered it with alpha, if I toggle on the transparency grid, you can see it's transparent in the areas that we masked out. So let's come back over here, and I'm just gonna sort of trim this up. Within our timeline, we'll hit B on this first frame where our reference frame is, hit N, and so now our work area is just in here. So 
For the fill method, it can't be object or edge blend. It has to be surface. The whole reason this effect works is because of this option. Make sure the range is just our work area so it stays within this area. So let's hit generate fill layer. So right now it's analyzing and I don't want to click literally anything because I am like superstitious. If you, if you do a bunch of these, you'll see sometimes it just doesn't make sense like why it doesn't work. And in general, it looks like if you keep the size of the area that you masked around uh, maybe a quarter to a third of the entire frame, then it works the best. Oh God, oh my Lord. But yeah, so that's the, uh, that's <laughs> how that works. Now we have to add a transition between this shot and this shot and then this shot and this shot. We're gonna extend this clip a little bit after it's already showing the data mosh. So we're gonna use a track mat that we'll make from a solid and fractal noise. So we'll do that. Command Y to make a solid. Hit OK. It doesn't matter the color because we're just gonna apply fractal noise to it. And for the fractal type, we're gonna switch this to basic. And we're going to keyframe the brightness. Hit the stopwatch next to brightness. And since this mat is gonna be for this, uh, this layer, we're gonna wanna make it start at black and go to white. So we'll make the brightness negative 100 because we didn't touch the contrast. So negative 100 is going to be um, black. And then we do 100 for white. And so if you scrub through here, you can see it transitions, but it, it doesn't look great. It looks like a fade and it's kind of organic. And we, we want it to be glitchy and digitally, not organic. So to do that, we're going to want to increase the contrast a shoot ton. So let's hit posterize, type posterize, and we'll just reduce it to 2.2 works for this. It's not two, so you have some grays. Um, doesn't really matter. So we have this transition, it goes from black to white. Now let's pull it down underneath our fill layer. We'll set it to Luma. All right. But you can see there's this uh, this weird edge halo around the pre-comp. And that is because our fill layer is actually a lot more expanded than we realize. So, um, so for the fill, we're going to want to uh, set its mat to be the inverse of what our pre-comp was. So we want everything in our, our content-aware fill to be exactly lined up with these corners. To do that, we'll add set mat onto this. If we solo it, we can see we have to set the layer to the pre-comp. We want to leave it on source and we want to invert it. And once it's out of the transition, like around there, let's split this command shift D and delete this set mat just to get rid of the fringing. So it's not there anymore. And we can see it still has a little bit of an edge. So to get rid of that, we're gonna add a simple choker and we'll choke it one pixel. And there's still an edge. So just duplicate it. Okay, let's take a look at this first transition part. That looks pretty good to me. I'm actually going to scale the, the glitch horizontally because I think that looks cooler. All right, now let's duplicate our gray solid, command D, and move it to the very top. Let's zoom out and we're going to move our second clip, the creepy pool guy, or whatever clip you're using, and we're gonna extend it over our fill a little bit. We're gonna hit U on our keyboard with our mat selected to bring up our keyframes for the fractal noise. And we'll just line it up and set our mat for the, the second clip to Luma Mat, just like before. Great, let's play it back. And there we have it. That's our like data mosh, but it ain't data mosh, but it's close enough effect. So thanks for watching guys.
Uh, subscribe for more, and I'll see you guys later.